Fry Guy here, and we're heading to another call. And today we're going to a McDonald's fryer, an LVE, which is a low volume electric 200 series fryer. I guess they have a couple of issues. One is they have a nuisance high limit tripping, which is an air code E10. Now, most of the time with McDonald's, their fryers, uh, the high limit probes just get a lot of carbon buildup and just have to be clean. Carbon buildup acts like a great insulator, almost like, a, like a, a jacket and holds heat very well, and it just trips the high limit. They're not very good at cleaning their fryers or filtering properly. A second uh, thing is um, it's possible they have a bad high limit board and a bad high limit probe on these things. We'll find out when we get there, but more than likely it's just a dirty probe. Um, and then the other issue they have is an error code E82D, which is a selector valve failure. Now, they have several selector valve error codes. This one in particular means that either the selector valve is not turning itself, the little motor's not turning, or the switch, there's uh, this particular switch has two little switches on there, micro switch on there. They're not getting compressed uh, at the right times or it's not sensing them. So it can be, it became unplugged from the controller. It came unplugged at the switch. Or again, the motor's not turning, which means either the motor's going bad or it became unplugged. So we'll find out when we get there. So I'll show you what we gotta do to get it fixed when we get there. All right, so here's what we gotta do. I just pick one of these vats here, it doesn't matter. Push into the hold the two middle buttons till you get to level three programming. That's where it is. One, one, two, two, one, one, two, two. Yes, yeah, very complicated. You wanna scroll to see tech mode. Select that. And we want to go to uh, valves. So it's T20 is your valves. Select the yes. Now you can use these arrows here. We want to go to where it says calibrate. So just keep going down. It's the selector valve calibrate, right? Number three is what you push to calibrate. And I'll tell you calibrate and then you push this here. And you can notice if you go down here, there's the motor. It doesn't want to run. But if I tap on it, it will run which tells me the motor's going bad. I'll have to show you here in a second. I right, see so now it's starting to spin, so it's intermittently not doing anything. That tells us the motor is going bad. It means it's getting voltage, the connection's good. It's gonna need a motor. So that's why they're getting all their issues. So we gotta replace that motor back there. It's also notice it's missing its cover. All right, so what we gotta do is to properly diagnose it right here, these wires here, is for your selector valve. Um, you'll even say it'll show like valve motor, I can't know if I can show you too well on here, valve motor plus or minus. Those two things there you check for voltage. If you're getting 24 volts out of uh, this, out of this wire, and then the next one next to like this wire and this wire, you're getting 24 volts, you're, you got voltage going to motor, the board is fine. The issue now is it's going to be the selector motor. All right, so I'm back here at this McDonald's. We're going to change out this selector valve motor. Um, it may have this cover on. If it does, it's supposed to you know, loosen these screws up. It might be a bit of a fight. But once you loosen up, the thing will just come off. All right, you want to disconnect this plug right here. Now, there's going to be no, absolutely no power going to this motor now. You can go ahead and start uh, taking the motor off. What you got to do is you got to get your... Uh, Allen keys and you're gonna undo these four, there should be four, one here, one here, and two in the back, um, uh, screws, and then this whole piece will come right off. All right, the old one's off. Now, if these give you a problem coming off the old ones like these ones did, I had to take the screws off the back, disconnect them off the old motor here, okay? Disconnect it off the motor there, just reattach it there. It's no big deal, it's, you know, an extra little step of getting it lined up, but it takes like an extra 30 seconds to do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one on. And I'll show you guys how we do that. All right, so I got the new one right here. Sorry, I don't have a microphone, by the way. Right. Actually, it's really simple. All you gotta do is just kind of get the uh, chain on the sprocket there. Once it's on the sprocket, then you are good to go. Just get this to line up, put the screws into here, 
And then you'll actually be able to turn it by hand slightly to get the holes lined up and then plug it back in and then we'll test it out. Oh, by the way, the Allen key that you need here, the Allen wrench, this is a uh, 1 8 Allen wrench that you need to remove those screws. Um, this is the only screws I never ever lock tight back in. Uh, they're just painful stripping. In fact, Penny Penny finally stopped lock tightening these on their new units because they were just cutting so much problems. You had to cut them all off and big, big pain in the butt. Alright, now when you put this back on, focus, focus there. make sure you leave a gap here because when you go to put this uh, cover back on, the screws got to go through that and up into there. So, so right now I'm going to give it a test to make sure the motor spins. Alright, remember we got to calibrate it so you can push these buttons here. Keep scrolling over to you see. Should be say valves. Oh, pumps and valves. There you go. Just keep going down. Select valve failed. Press three. So that's going to cut. We try. We do. There we go. You can kind of hear it. Trying to see if I can see the motor. The motor is turning. Boom. And we are good to go. It's actually pretty dark good. It shouldn't be below 12. It shouldn't be below above 18. So we are good. Should be below 12 and shouldn't be above 18. So it's really good. All right, now we're testing it and it's working. Once the oil gets through the filter pan. Now on their other fryer, uh, this is a split vat here. The other one was a full vat. This is, has a, a recovery fault error. And I guess both of them are getting a high limit error. So what we're gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead and correct this recovery fault first. I wanna see what's going on real fast. So now let's change filter pad. Ugh, obviously I didn't do that. So what generally that means is this. If I push and hold the info, you know, Error log, we don't want to look there. So E10. By the way, when you see right, it tells us what's going on, on the right hand side. When you see L, it means the left hand side. So right hand side, left side. Now if I push info, the curve is 259. It should be at a minute 40. So a little long. Um, it could have been it's just not plugged in fully. It could be elements going bad. So we'll have to do some voltage checks on that here in a little bit. All right, so you drop the front panel, it's just one little scroll, and then it drops down, flip it in place. And right here is your contactors. Now, both these vats here share one power cord. One contactor here, that's for the vat number one, which is this one here. And that contactor for the power cord in vat number two, which is what we're looking at right here. All right, so those are your primary contactors. These are your heat contactors, right? So what you want to do is you want to check voltage coming in or through the contactor. Now I already checked voltage going across each leg from here to here. So what you want to do is you want to put one of your uh, probes here from your meter, like your black one and then you got your, your red one. You want to put one probe on one wire and then the other probe on the other wire there. Um, and then you should get around 200, you know, 2 to 210 uh, volts. Then go from line 1 to line 3, you know, so make sure you got 208 volts across. And then go to this contactor here and uh, do the same thing on this side of the wire, checking voltage, you know, sticking your probe in, you know, let's say this hole here and then another probe in the other hole. You know, in this hole, you know, the black one, red one, then black one, red one, and then black one, red one. Make sure we got 208 across all three. If you got 208 volts and you got voltage going through. I um, already did that. We have voltage going through. So next what I need to do is I need to do an amp draw test. So I'm going to take my amp meter and I'm going to clip it on and see what we got. All right. So we got our meter on. Now what you're going to do is, is you want to check your amp draws. Um, so you can kind of see the contact here. I'm going to have to press in. Here's my little probe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the little middle uh, portion of the contactor that engages mainly and just press it in and look for right there. Amp draws almost 18 amps. Um, I went across the other ones and got 
just about 18 amps, which tells me that it's working fine. So more than likely they may have had too much oil in it and or it wasn't plugged in fully. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset, uh, clear the error code, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna re clear the recovery error that was on there. Now to, to clear it, you gotta go into a tech menu. So push the two middle buttons here. Number one, we got it in level three. Now, passwords. One, one, two, two, one, one, two, two. And we want to go to tech resets. So now recovery, we want to clear that. So we're going to go ahead and clear it. Now it's been cleared. Now the recovery error should go away. Now if they get it again, um, it could be the elements are starting to go bad or contact with it. But right now as I tested it, everything is testing good. It's got voltage, it's got amp draw. So we are good to go there. It should heat up properly. Um, you know, we'll find out hopefully, you know, maybe tomorrow morning if they call it back in. Okay, so I lifted the LM up because now we're going to address their E10 high limit errors. Um, as you can see, this right here on a split vat, it has a small element like this with one high limit probe. Um, and the probe is right here. And as you can see, it's got a lot of black carbon buildup on this tip. That tip should be clean. Um, that's probably going to eliminate a lot of the high limit problems. So we're going to go ahead and scrape and clean it off. You can just use like a flathead screwdriver and scrape a lot of stuff off. You'd be surprised how easy that stuff comes off. So we're going to do it to this one and this element here. You know, you just got to use a special tool to pick it up and hook it up. And then I'm going to go in and see if they've been filtering properly or anything like that, which it doesn't look like they're doing terrible. So, all right. So I cleaned that probe. Um, one thing I want to point out to you guys is this probe should not be separated from the element. It needs to be up against the element. That's how Henny Penny has it. That's how they work. Um, so make sure it's clean. You see it's a lot cleaner up there. Down here, you know, if you want to clean it, go ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I even tried removing some of the crud off the element itself. But um, really all it needs to be clean is the first inch of the tip of the probe. So that way it will read uh, the oil temperature more accurately and not trip on them. So. And I still got that goop on there. All right, guys. Well, like I said, I apologize for not having my um, microphone. I accidentally left it. But you saw now how to replace that selector valve. And I went ahead and I showed you guys how to actually test it instead of just by, you know, tapping on it. Um, I wanted to show you guys the real honest to God way of doing it, you know, by checking those two wires, you'll see selector valve plus and minus, two, putting two probes in there, you should be getting 24 volts um, uh, uh, AC, sorry, 24 volts AC. If you don't have that, then the problem's going to be that board. If you do have it, the problem's going to be that motor. I mean, it's also possible the connections were bad, but the connections were all good, so you can check those connections. Um, once I replaced that motor, it started right up. So right there, guys, we're good to go. Now on the second uh, fryer that has the E10 error codes and the recovery error, um, the recovery error, I went ahead and checked voltage. We had proper voltage. I explained how to check voltage on that. It's kind of hard to do because I have to hold this, you know, camera here. So and I need two hands for the probes. Uh, but um, I told you I checked voltage and I showed you the amp draw, which we're getting amp draws. Uh, I even went ahead just for giggles, compared it to the other vet that was working fine and the amp draws were just fine. Um, so more than likely had way too much oil in there so it was slow to recover or the plug wasn't plugged in all the way, which will cause that problem. So I went ahead, reset the faults on that, which I showed you how to do. And then for the e 10 high limits, I showed you I lifted up the the element cleaned the high limit probe off and error didn't happen anymore so with that that fryer is done so now so hopefully this helped you guys out if it has go ahead and hit that like button if you got any comments or suggestions go ahead and leave that down below as well also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for more notifications so that way you guys can get more good training videos with that guys i'll see you later